Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 339 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. The UK tour is on sale now. London has like five seats left. What that? What? That's so cool. Uh, so we've got uh, coming up. Uh, <laughs> I will have already finished the Queensland leg. So then next we're going to Hobart, Launceston, Adelaide, Ballarat, Warnable, Shepparton. Uh, then we go to the UK where we've got London, Manchester and Liverpool. And we just locked in a Leeds venue that might be on sale by now. I'm not sure. And it's looking like we're going to add like seven to 10 more dates to the UK tour because they're all selling really well. Can't believe it. Thank you so much. Let's get into the show. Guys, Michael Richards, Kramer, Kramer. has released a book. And I can only assume that at least a third of it is dedicated to the moment <laughs> at the comedy club where he was just screaming slurs, perhaps one of the most viral stand-up bits of all time, still today, and we live in the moment of Matt Rife. You know, I thought my Prince Philip bit was was super, super viral, but I know how I could top it. <laughs> I know how I could do better than that, views-wise, not career-wise. Um... But he's come out and he's released a book. Did you know that he's 74? Oh, what? He's 74 and they're still they're still talking about the N-word thing. Which I don't think they shouldn't be. But imagine being 74 and like one you bump so hard. <laughs> when did he do that? Was that that was in the 2000s, wasn't it? It was when I was a kid, I think. I feel like I watched it when I was like a teen, maybe even younger. I feel like 2006. it's 2006. That's right. I was just going to say that. I must have read it before. Um, 2006. So how many years ago is that? That's like 18. 18 years ago. And dude, imagine bombing so hard. That was his last ever set. <laughs> the comedy club that he performed at, which by the way, I have been to. I've been there. When I was in LA, I went to that comedy club. And the comedians were so good, but I just could not take it in. I couldn't enjoy it because the whole time I was thinking, oh my God, I'm in the Kramer venue. This, like, I felt like, you know what? Have you seen Dave Chappelle's set about, about it? Like, which was pretty soon after Dave Chappelle's on stage and he goes, I can't believe this is where Kramer lost his shit. <laughs> And the whole time I was just thinking about, oh, this is, I'm down here, but up there on the balcony, that's where a bunch of black dudes were yelling at him. And then he started going crazy, saying all the slurs and talking about, he said something like, back in the day, we would have you, you slurs hanging upside down with a fork in your ass. Like just the most, <laughs> the most racist thing I've ever heard to this day. Is Michael Richards just screaming at a, at a few black hecklers at a comedy set and he's still talking about it. And that's so, that's so brutal. So the book comes out next week on the 3rd of June. Okay. I've just pre-ordered it. You did? That's awesome. I bet it's great because it would, geez, talk about like a, a, a peak and a valley. <laughs> because he would probably have like, you know, he'd be doing all right and. He's, you know, kind of getting acting jobs here and there. And then all of a sudden he got Seinfeld and he would have gone. Yeah! And then the moment happened. So the comedy club themselves, the Laugh Factory, was it? Yeah. I think um, they came out and they said that Michael Richards ban would be lifted if he could prove that he was like a better person if he's evolved from where he was he could maybe perform on that stage again um cancel culture's over <laughs> did you hear that you lefties cancel culture's over the laugh factory is gonna have the slur guy back the all you snowflakes are probably gonna be sucking and crying about there's no fucking way that he would ever get back on stage do you reckon maybe. i don't think i think that People would let him. I think people would allow him to because he seems like I don't think I've ever seen anyone more remorseful for anything. And I've seen like videos of people pleading guilty to murder and they've 
seemed less remorseful than Michael Richards on The Tonight Show apologising via Zoom with Jerry Seinfeld. So the owner of the Laugh Factory told TMZ he believes in second chances and doesn't want to hold a grudge. But then it goes on to say, TMZ said Jamie says he was at the club the night Michael let rip with his racial, racial slurs and questions Michael's take on it. Uh, the actor says in his book that he overreacted when a heckler told him he wasn't funny. Uh -huh. But according to TMZ, Jamie says there were no heckles. So he's just like, interesting. He's just gone on this racist rant for no reason. Wasn't provoked. Right. Yeah, I mean, who do you believe? Probably, probably not the guy that... <laughs> Probably not the guy that went on the racist rant. Yeah, what's uh, what's crazy about that is like I've never, I don't think I've ever seen or heard of an entire audience walking out, like hundreds of people. Because what's really funny about that as well is that it was not a, a Kramer show. Like they didn't just come there to see him. So like he performs so poorly that, the guy on after him didn't get to go up. <laughs> like, he didn't end his set. The audience ended their night. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Here's, here's how this... Michael Richards entered the cu cultural consciousness and the apartment next door as a force of spontaneity named Cosmo Kramer. He was the rubber-limbed, unchained id of Seinfeld the most popular sitcom of its era, era, sitcom, and a cultural phenomenon cultish in its fervour, but too massive to really be considered a cult. Richards and Kramer worked without a net. The energy, the motion, the, the Kavorka forever verged on chaos. This journalist is insufferable. But the chaos had a purpose and it was tremendously popular. Richards won three Emmys for the role and regularly earned the show's biggest laughs. I would say, yeah, easy. He's probably the funniest sitcom character ever. And that's not because of the writing. It's because of him. Like one of the, one of the true great comedic actors. And he like, honestly, if he didn't do this shit at the laugh factory, you'd probably put him in front of Jim Carrey. I think for funniest on screen guy, that's going to be controversial. But I think that Kramer's is funnier than Jim Carrey. Up until 2006. Then late one November 9, 2006, the chaos tipped over into disaster. Performing a surprise set at the Laugh Factory. Oh, that's rough. Because they would have they would have been so excited when he got up. Oh, my God. It's, a, it's Kramer. <laughs> and then he would have been like, watch this. Performing a surprise set at the Laugh Factory, a venerable Los Angeles comedy club. Richards responded to some hecklers. With a viciously ugly tirade, he heard the, heard the N word about over and over, turning a night of uncomfortable comedy into the kind of incident that destroys careers. Yeah, that shit could have fucking closed the club. Uh, this was early in the era of ubiquitous cell phone cameras when a horrible mistake could instantly be transmitted around the world. Richards quickly pivoted to damage control, making an appearance via satellite to apologize during his friend Jerry Seinfeld's visit to The Late Show with David Letterman. But the damage was done. He was now widely labeled a racist and worse. Have you seen that apology on David Letterman? Yeah. It's so rough. But, but also, here's how funny Michael Richards is, and here's how great he is at Kramer, is that while he's apologizing for an unholy racist tirade. People are giggling and laughing and Jerry Seinfeld tells them that to stop. <laughs> like that's how under, like become so undeniably talented at what you do that during your apology for your racist tirade, people start to appreciate your talent. You know, like, I'm, like that's like, uh, like Travis Scott, like, dude, probably killed a bunch of people at his at his shows, but how good are his shows? Let's buy tickets. <laughs> um, 
Richards addresses his night of infamy in his new memoir, Entrances and Exits. Okay, that's a great title. That perfectly describes his entire career. He entered and then he exited. Once again, apologizes. The pop culture mulch machine will quick, quickly reduce the book to sound bites. Michael Richards says he's not a racist, but The Laugh Factory is but one tendril of Richards' book, albeit an important one, try, tying into the dangerous high wire of performance in general and stand-up comedy in particular. Is he a stand-up comic? Or did he start doing it after Seinfeld? Um, yeah, I feel like there was like a, there was a real... I think he was a stand-up before Seinfeld. Oh, that's so brutal. See, if I could never give up stand-up, I could give up acting. Do you know what I mean? Like if I fucked up so bad that I had to, I, I was became a really good actor and then I had to give it up, I'd be all right as long as I could do stand-up. But, if, but say if I got a, a role on the next Seinfeld or whatever and I crushed it, I could never give up stand up. Mm. I would always go back there, no matter how successful I became. So if he was like that with stand up and he then had to give it up, that's that's horrible. I do I don't know. I feel sorry for him, but like of course this is gonna happen. It's it's like a double edged it's I don't know. It's hard to feel sorry for the 74 year old richest guy on earth who <laughs> like what did he think was going to happen but also i don't know maybe we should stop hammering him about it mm. but also have you seen the footage it's pretty <laughs> like what do you expect people to do here's what i think i think that yeah he should be able to he, he should be able to perform again because i think he's been punished enough but no one will ever forget like that's just that's the real punishment is he gets to go back to doing stand up, but he will always and forever be remembered as the guy who did that on the laugh factory stage. <laughs> like, like you'll never, you'll never get over that. That's, um, yeah, I I'm trying to think of a, of a, of a controversy that someone's gotten in that's overshadowed their talent. Like this one has. Like, not even the Michael Jackson stuff overshadowed Thriller. Do you know what I mean? I guess probably because no one caught it on camera. Like, if there were rumours about Kramer doing this, but no one filmed it, then we'd still remember him as the lovable Kramer. But because of <laughs> it's on camera. It's like one of the first ever viral stand-up clips as well, which is just so, so funny. Someone losing their fucking mind. Brutal. Sorry, I find that so funny. I almost had an asthma attack. Um, so the club has invited him back if he can prove that he's changed as a person. And that's great. And I hope he has changed. But also, I think Michael Richards has the opportunity to do the funniest thing ever. <laughs> Imagine his first set back and it's just a reworked version of his racist tirade. High risk, high stakes. All right. Obviously, in 99 universes out of 100, it doesn't go well. But if there was even 1%, if there was even a 1% chance that he could nail that bit, slurs and everything, and even, even black people would be like, oh, all right, he got us. That's good. Very good. Well done. Because we've all been there. We've all done a bad set, reworked it, and come out and just killed what if this is his, the ultimate joke that didn't work, that then killed? Probably not. I think that if I was him, I'd, I'd just retire. I mean, if look, anything you do after Seinfeld is just not really going to be... Not, it's like, you just... you just That's the, that's the trouble of, of being part of the last good television show. Is nothing you do afterwards is, is seen as anywhere near as good unless you're Larry David but you know that that maybe says a lot of a lot about Larry David's involvement with Seinfeld um how about how about we listen to some of his racist tirade okay <laughs> 
Pause it. Pause it. <laughs> Who is... <laughs> Who's the one girl that goes... <laughs> I want to know her name. <laughs> like... Everyone else is like, what the fuck? And standing up, getting ready to leave. But one girl is like, that's right. That's right. We want to let him in venues before. <laughs> and she looks around like, oh, shit. We, we don't like this. We're not on, on board with this. She's at, she's at like a, a work event. Her <laughs> co-workers are looking at her horrified. You can talk, you can talk, you can talk. Your brain don't want to f***. Pause that Okay, that's enough. <laughs> we can't play that shit. We have to bleep that. Yeah, <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Every time I listen to it, because you know, you, I feel like that's that's one of the the all time great YouTube videos. And every time I listen to it, it gets worse. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. <clears throat> Anyway, um, <laughs> I've got microplastics in my balls. <laughs> Have you read this, Keelan? There's microplastics in everyone's nuts. Every single human being on planet Earth with testicles, Caitlyn Jenner, I'm looking at you, <laughs> has microplastics in their nuts. Now... Every time I come, I feel like a 3D printer. <laughs> Yuck. What? It's true. <laughs> There's microplastics in our balls. It's over. Everyone's talking about, oh, I, I eat organic food. You've got plastic in your testicles. No wonder we're all so fucked up. Everyone's, everyone's mental health is being destroyed and we're all coming out with with strange diseases no one's ever seen before. There's plastic in our balls. I mean, at this point, everyone who's uh, who's impregnating someone is just basically creating a very small baby born. You know that little baby born toy? <laughs> baby born, baby born. That's real. They made baby born real. Fucking coming plastic into your beautiful <laughs> wife. It, re it really breastfeeds and poos and wees. Baby born, baby born. It's got autism. Human testicles contain microplastics and nanoplastics at three times, level levels three times higher than animal testes and human placentas. What's a nanoplastic? Now I got to worry about nanoplastic? Uh, What's the difference between micro and nanoplastic? Typically less than half a micron in length and maybe like 20 to 200 nanometers in width. That's a nanoplastic? Mm. What's a microplastic? And and what's a nanometer? Is, is that smaller than a, than a millimeter? <laughs> microplastic, a small, a small plastic piece is less than five millimeters long. That's big. Five millimeters is huge. That's swimming around my balls and my brain. That's fucking crazy. Uh, so a microplastic is equivalent to the size of a grain of rice. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's massive. We yeah. have microplastics the size of rice in our fucking bloodstream. No wonder everyone's getting strokes. Meanwhile, nanoplastics are far smaller. See, I was assuming that microplastic was more of the nanoplastic size. Like, we wouldn't be able to see it. Meanwhile, I've got, like, a grain-sized piece of a fidget spinner swimming around my bloodstream. That's crazy. Um, what, so what, what do nanoplastics in your balls do? Why were they testing balls? That's what, that's what interests me. And also, why are there uh, way more plastics in my nuts than anywhere else in my body? That's... Like my balls are like a like I've got a little coin purse full of plastic coins in there. That's crazy. Uh, such minuscule particles can invade individual cells and tissues in major organs, mm -hmm. interrupting Great. cellular processes and potentially depositing 
a couple of sciencey word chemicals, uh, flame mm. retardants and heavy metals. Oh, that's good. We become flame proof. Leading to genital and reproductive malformations. We're so cooked. It's it, so it's so over for for the human race. How good, We're fucked. How good is this? Leading mm-hmm. to a decline in sperm count. In fact, mm-hmm. sperm counts in part of the world, including the US, mm-hmm. have declined by at least 50% in the last 50 years. Oh, so like in 100 years, we just will be the last humans <laughs> because, because we couldn't stop using fucking plastic. You know what's crazy about microplastics and nanoplastics? You know where most of it's from? I assumed it was from like all the bags floating around the ocean or like single-use plastics or, or just like plastic, right? It's not. You know what it's from? Tires. Most of it is from car tires on the road just being in use. <laughs> okay. So I was like, oh, well, if we can somehow conquer the plastic problem, we'll be fine. No, we won't because it's actually tires. We're fucked. There's a, a study that, <clears throat> that tested 23 preserved testes from cadavers between the ages of 16 to 88. Um, and they found that there was 12 times more plastic, 12, 12 different types of plastic as opposed to those of dogs that also were tested. But right. the, uh, the, this scientist guy goes on to say the levels of microplastic shards and types of plastic in human testes were three times greater than those found in dogs and dogs are eating off the floor. So this really puts into perspective what we're putting in our bodies. That's so fucking crazy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, that's got to be like every time you use single use plastic, you're eating some of the container every single time. If I, like, you know, what I used to do that I don't do anymore. I used to like, if I had a takeaway coffee in a coffee cup and it went cold, I would heat the coffee cup up in the microwave. I remember. And I would just, I assume I would just, I bet someone's writing six paragraphs about how I'm just giving myself brain cancer by doing that for sure. Just melting a a McDonald's takeaway cup into my drink and then go, "Mm, delicious. (laughs) This one tastes a bit different. I wonder why. I bet that's going to be the worst thing you could ever possibly do <laughs> is heat up like a fucking single-use takeaway coffee cup and go, I feel blue. <laughs> I've st- I'm starting to smell sounds. I'm having a stroke. Does anyone smell burnt toast? That's We're so fucked. So hang on. What's How old were the bodies that they were testing the nuts off? Between 16 and 88. Years old? Yeah. So like, well, I feel like that's too recent. I want to go back a hundred years and test some nuts and see how much plastic is in it. Either. Like it's none. When do we start using plastic? Uh, okay. It's got to be within a hundred years, right? Yeah, I'll look up all these things. But a smaller study in China also found microplastics in human testes and 30 semen samples. Was that? Re- recent studies have also indicated that mice have... <laughs> Microplastics and reduced sperm count, which has co- which have caused abnormalities and hormone disruptions. See, this is this is like people are like, oh, all I have to do is recycle. You've got plastic in your balls. You're fucked, and it's never going away. Maybe this is how we evolve, right? Where only people who can tolerate huge amounts of plastic in their bloodstream, their brainstem, their balls, their semen in the ovaries that grow their infants, only those people who survive. Like, you know those worms that can eat plastic? Maybe soon we'll evolve to actually be fueled by McDonald's and microplastics. And that's how we ascend and become greater than we are. Right? Survival of the fittest. So we started using plastics in 1907. Wow. So that's like 93 years ago. (laughs) it's not my fault my brain's full of microplastic how many years ago is that don't laugh at me if you can't do it off the top of your head don't tell me what was it 1907 Uh uh-huh That's so, to get to, (laughs) to get to the year 2000, that's 93, right? Plus 24. Uh So that's 
a hundred <laughs> and seventeen years ago. Yeah, yeah. Close. Yes, yes, that's right. A hundred and seventeen years ago, we started using plastic. So what's that? That's like two people ago, kinda. Not even really two people ago. Uh, it's like three or four generations. Depends how you look at it. Oh, okay. I'm talking like, like fully oh, like. Sorry, I understand what you mean. From from uh, from birth to death, that's kind of actually only like one and a half people, right? So. Oh, okay. So so plastic was invented in 1907, but plastic began to be mass produced after the Second World War and again in the 60s and 70s when everyone kind of switched over to So plastic. so we switched over to using plastic for everything in like say the 60s, right? So that what's that 20 years ago? <laughs> 60 years. Yeah. Yeah, so in 60 years we've halved our fertility rate. <laughs> From just eating plastic. And I wonder what we're eating right now that we don't even know is doing even more damage. We're so, it's so over. This is the last, this is the last generation of people. People have been saying that since the fucking Stone Age. This is the last good generation. Kids today, I don't know. Untold, untold psychic damage is being done to every single human being because their brain is being made with plastic inside every cell. That's awesome. That's sweet. I think that's cool. I think that that eventually, in like a couple more people from now, is we're actually going to start having micro humans inside our plastic bodies. Oh yeah, I've got a microorganism in me. Human flesh is weak anyway. All right, plastic is where it's at. It lasts forever. Plastic's better than steel. You know, that's so awesome. People, people were like, oh, all we need to do is clean up the plastic from the ocean and we'll fix everything. It's in your balls, brother. You're coming a Coles shopping bag into your wife every night. It's fucking, it's over. She's cooked. Yeah. Her womb has turned into Tupperware. She's done for. And you're, <laughs> you're, you're a 3D printer, buddy. Everyone's, everyone's, everyone's got their own, like, personal 3d printer and they're making the oh, i've made the rock to push you're coming the rock to push into your girlfriend every day if you're lucky <clears throat> once a week if you're average <laughs> <laughs> keelan once again oversharing about his sex life um that's sweet i, I just think that's uh that's so good that it's we're fucked anyway um, anyway, make sure make sure you recycle, guys. Um, it's and we'll save we'll save the planet. Manscape, do I have an email here? They've got a script for me to read, don't I? I mean, this is all completely organic. I love Manscape. Manscape.com. Uh, use code Lou Spears for twenty percent off and free shipping. Do I have a? Yeah, forwarded it to you. You forwarded it to me. Okay, <clears throat> is that which email is that? That too. This is what they this is what they pay us for, isn't it? Manscaped. Oh, here we go. Manscaped June. Yeah, that's the one. AU Winter. That's good. It's localized. Because before I used to be yelling about the American summer when I was, you know, freezing my, <laughs> freezing my beautifully shaved balls off. Speaking of balls, all right, the inside of your balls, they're full of plastic. And there's nothing we can do about that. The outside of your balls, we can make it look nice. All right. Okay. So let's see how they've done with their localized Australian copy. This is going to make you buy a Manscaped razor. <clears throat> AU Winter, talking points. <laughs> hey there, mates. Whether you're hitting the slopes or cozying up by the fire with a cold one, it's essential to keep your downstairs <laughs> looking dapper. Don't let your winter warmth turn into a hairy mess down there. Get your hands on, a, on Manscaped Performance Package 5.0 and trim with confidence. With our exclusive offer, use code CODE. Oh, sorry. Use code Lou Spears to Spears, snag Spears. Spears. <laughs> you guys have to buy the Manscaped razor, and you have to use the code because if this is how you enjoy the ad reads, this is this, this two way street. Use code Spears to snag twenty percent off plus free shipping. Stay groomed and ready for any Aussie adventure this winter with Manscaped. Talking points. Do not read. 
Host to talk about their thoughts on Manscaped products and if being well-groomed give them, gives them more confidence. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I, I left myself get far too unmaintained a couple days ago. I left it for way too long. And then I just, I just got in the shower and I got my, my lawnmower 5.0. And, dude, it's so much better than any trimmer I've used. And I'm actually being I'm not even looking at my phone. What are you laughing about? It's true. Yeah, I agree. Then what's funny? Nothing. I what? just love doing these ad reads. Me too. I actually <laughs> genuinely love doing them. Look, I could be doing a, a read for Raid Shadow Legends going, it's my favorite game. So this is actually good. <laughs> um, I love, uh, I don't know who's written this, but I highly doubt they were Australian. Grab your ghoulies, their new best mate with Manscaped Performance Package 5.0. I've never heard ghoulies before. I've heard this one before. Tame the wild bush down under with our lawnmower 5.0. Mate. That's good. Um, call to action required. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code, insert code, Spears at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code, insert code, Spears at manscaped.com. Winter's coming. Make sure the boys are prepared. No, for real, grab a razor. It's great. They've got a little attachment for your beard. I've done, I feel like it's the first time I've been happy with like my facial hair that when I've done it myself, I've never been really good at my, never been good at it doing it myself, but I have with uh, the Manscaped attachment and uh, I've got a different attachment for my balls. And they're looking great. Um, join the Patreon for access. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, 20% off and free shipping. Um. I've done it again, accidentally, uh, Keelan, just the other day, okay, um, on the 20th of the month, uh, I tweeted out, the Super Size Me documentary changed the world, but if the guy made it today, he'd be seen as just another Mr. Beast clone, uh, which is quite funny and also true. Uh, then the guy died right after. I tweeted that. Morgan Spurlock. Almost instantly. I tweeted that out and then he just, he just died. He had enough. He's like, that's enough. I'm not a Mr. Beast clone. That is really funny about the, the Super Size Me documentary. If you, you haven't seen it, it actually changed the world. It's one of the most influential documentaries ever where a guy eats nothing but McDonald's. How long does he do it for? 30 days. Only a month? He eats it for a month and every time he's offered... To supersize the meal, he has to say yes. And he does it every day for a month. And he just goes to doctors and nutritionists and experts. And he records all of his health levels. And uh, he has a look at his organs and all this kind of stuff. And he talks about how he's feeling. And his health just rapidly declines. Uh, of course, because he's eating nothing but McDonald's. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, everything. And this documentary went so viral. Not even viral. It was just so successful. This is kind of like before social media and stuff. It was so unbelievably successful that it made it into the curriculum of schools everywhere. I remember on my first time I watched it, I was in health class. Um, and they were like, look how bad fast food is for you. Look what it does to this guy who ate nothing but fast food. For 30 days. <clears throat> he also exercised less, uh, walking a maximum of 1.5 miles a day to match the average American's physical activity. Interesting. But what's come out, like what's become public knowledge afterwards, is that at the same time, and this goes completely unmentioned in the documentary, he was also a raging alcoholic. <laughs> like, there's a part in the documentary where he goes to the doctor and he gets all of his organs tested, blood tests, everything. And the doctor's like, okay, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Also, you've got the liver of a, of an alcoholic. And he goes, oh, that's weird. Must be the McDonald's. Can't imagine what that would be. That must be the Big Macs. That must be because uh, yesterday I supersized my Coke and my chippies. And I had too many chippies. That must be why I've got the liver of a raging alcoholic. Turns out he was a raging alcoholic. I don't think that eating nothing but McDonald's for a month would be that bad for you. I don't think so. Am I crazy? No, I, I kind of agree. Just for, like, if you did it for a year, you're fucked. But I reckon if you did it for a month, I think that you probably feel pretty yucky, but I don't think it would do the damage that 
he reported in his documentary because, again, the guy was a raging alcoholic. And he was, like, if you watch it, knowing that he's hung over for a lot of it, like, he's always talking about how awful he feels waking up in the morning. Yeah, and there's, like, a scene where he starts throwing up. There is! A hundred percent! He's And it's in the morning, right? After breakfast. Yeah. Fuck, true! That's actually just a documentary about alcoholism and how bad it is and how, how well you can hide it, too. Because his wife doesn't seem to know anything about it. Although, to be fair, if I was eating nothing but Big Macs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I'd probably start drinking too just to get through the meal. <laughs> Maybe that's what they edited out of the documentary. He'd be like, do you want to supersize that? And he'd be like, yeah. And he'd get his giant Coke and he'd pour half a bottle of vodka in there. That's his breakfast. And so now he's died. How, what Pancreatic cancer. Can you search pancreatic cancer and alcohol for me, please? Yeah, that's crazy. It must have been, and it's probably not alcohol. It's probably from him eating McDonald's every day for a month many years ago. Pancreatic cancer is more common in people with chronic pancreatitis. Is that how you say it? Pancreatitis, I assume. Yeah. Uh, and about 70 out of 100 cases of chronic pancreatitis are due to drinking high amounts of alcohol <laughs> over a long time. Oh, no. <laughs> so, oh, no. Yeah, that's what I mean. The Super Size Me documentary is actually about alcoholism, how bad it is for you, and how well someone can hide being an alcoholic for their entire life, and then it culminates in an early death from pancreatic cancer. That's crazy. After I tweet a joke about you, that's how people die. Um, wow, that's wild. Poor guy. I feel sorry for him. Uh, it's also super eerie that he died right when... People, I was not the only person talking about him. A lot of people were joking about him on, on the internet and then he died like three days after everyone started talking about him. That's crazy. It's like people just was like, hey, remember that guy? Something about the universe just put it back in the, into the consciousness of the average Twitter user. Um, yeah, but I think that's actually, I'm 100% right, where it's pretty crazy where a documentary that completely revolutionized and changed the world like it revolutionized the world of documentaries and it also changed the world in the sense that it awoken everyone's consciousness to how bad fast food can be for you, regardless of the accuracy of the documentary. It made everyone go, holy shit, this food is really bad for you and these companies don't care. And also Americans are very unhealthy people. It's, it's, it puts so many ideas in, into the consciousness of the average person. But if you did that today and it had never been done before, it would be like a, a, a YouTube video that would get like maybe 100,000 and the thumbnail would be their best attempt at a Mr. Beast thumbnail and people would be like, oh, you're just copying Mr. Beast. What's up, guys? Today I'm going to eat nothing but McDonald's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is the Super Size Me Challenge. And every time I'm offered to supersize my meal, I must say yes. Also, I've been drinking vodka in my coffee every single morning for the last 10 years. But that has nothing to do with why my pancreatitis hurts. My pancreas hurts. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be eating nothing but McDonald's for every single meal for 30 days. If I win, I'm, I'm going to give $10,000 to charity. If I lose, I have to drive all the way to Mr. Beast's house and give him a happy meal. Like and subscribe. And the whole thing's fake. He never does it. <laughs> That's what that video would be. And, and it wouldn't be a, an hour long, two hour long documentary that you would pay to see in cinemas. It would be like an eight and a half minute video. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. When I'm eating a Big Mac, I like to play the Orc Warrior. <laughs> and that's every that's every documentary now. This is actually not a documentary. It's a 30-day challenge. Mm. I went to the worst hotel in the most impoverished nation in the world. Look at all of these poor people. Glad I'm not them. Then someone else tries to copy that guy and gets kidnapped by the Mexican cartel, beheaded. It's put on live leak. The, that guy who keeps getting kidnapped by ISIS. Yeah. Or the, uh, or 
The Taliban. It's yes. The Taliban. Yeah. He's. They let him go. By the way, he's Twice. back now. Who are you talking about? The English guy with blonde hair yeah. who's on Twitter? Did he get kidnapped twice? Twice. Because he went back. Why would he go back? <laughs> yeah, look it up. What's his name? Lord Miles. Great follow on Twitter. Um, a guy who just goes to the, just the most dangerous places on earth and tweets about it, about his experience live of like, I'm here, I'm there. And he, he ended up getting kidnapped by the Taliban. Uh, and people thought he was dead for like four months, myself included. I was actually devastated. I was like, oh, no, I've lost my, my best Twitter follow. Oh, no, I must be thinking of someone else. But Lord Miles in Afghanistan is a book that details his adventure. We should get it. We $59. should. $59. $59? Fuck you, Lord Miles. Um, all right. What else are we talking about here? The uh, I just sent you an article about uh, McDonald's. Speaking of supersize me. Oh, okay. Let's have a look here. What what might has my good friend Keelan sent me? Okay. Macca's worker filmed in disgusting act. Is this Australia? Yeah. Okay, awesome. All right. A McDonald's worker has been filmed in a disgusting act, which has horrified fast food lovers. Uh, and it's a video of the manager of, of a McDonald's heating the head of a mop inside the chip warmer. The fries warmer. A McDonald's worker has been filmed drying a mop head under the restaurant's fries warmer centimeters away from food. The fast food chain has insisted the gross act, which occurred several weeks ago in a brand of the Ipswich suburb of Booville, there's your first problem, southwest of Brisbane, was an isolated incident. <laughs> the short video of the female worker holding what appears to be a detachable microfiber mop head underneath the heater close to boxes of fries, quickly went viral after being shared by the subtle Bogan Traits Facebook page. Yeah, and we wonder why our nuts are full of microplastics because this is the food that we're eating. Th this is what we deserve. If you've ever in your life gotten McDonald's from a regional Macca's, you deserve this. Whatever, if you're, whatever's in your balls right now, you put it there. And I'm talking about myself included. Remember we did that regional tour? We went to some horrific fast food places. Mm. Imagine how, how many macro plastics were in our delicious meal and Sizzler. just like mop sweat. Mm. Yeah, we went to, yeah, we went to Sizzler and Keelan vomited in the bushes out the front. It yeah. was a dark time in Keelan's life. Ate a lot of jelly. Ate way too much jelly. That probably wasn't even jelly. I bet it was just like a Tupperware container that had <laughs> been heated up and dyed red. Keelan ate six of them. I feel sicky. <laughs> That, I bet that jelly's still in you. <laughs> yeah. It's like just below the skin. Because then I got horrifically sick for two weeks. Yeah, he got mixed sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, guys. Obviously, this is very important to all the listeners. Obviously, we're trying to grow the podcast. And I think I've figured out the best way to grow the podcast. A lot of people will be like, post clips, uh, you know, make memes, put yourself out there on, on platforms like TikTok and Instagram, and that they're good ideas, and we are going to do that. A much better idea is something I've come up with, okay? Now, obviously, we talked about earlier in the year, uh, we became founding members of the Tasmania Devils AFL team, okay? We're a founding member, and what we got by giving them, what was it, 50 bucks? Spearhead Sundays is going to go on the wall, of the Tasmanian Devils training center that will maybe be built by 2052. Now I've noticed that the official Tasmania football club has an Instagram that has 72,000 followers, but every single thing they post gets two comments. Maybe I propose that we make the Tasmania football club Instagram, the new official comment section of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Because no one is commenting on these things because the team doesn't exist. They're not playing games. They're just posting pictures of Tasmanian devils <laughs> and screenshots from Google. Their social media team will be completely overwhelmed 
by our presence. And we're going to be a positive presence. I'm not saying we're going to ruin their social media page. What I'm saying is that they would probably love some engagement, some community spirit, and seeing as there's 72,000 people that follow the Tasmania Football Club, I feel like that those people would love Spearhead Sundays. And if we jumped in all of the recent posts talking about our favorite moments from the latest episode of Spearhead Sundays, I think that would be really good for the show. So that's all we're going to do. I mean, just for example, their most recent post, they posted a guy wearing the Tasmanian football jumper uh, in the Arctic Circle. I don't know if 72,000 of these people are fake accounts or they've paid for the followers or they're people that followed and lost interest because there's no team yet. But no one likes or comments on these things. So I just commented, I love Tasmania, the real Australia. Top comment. Easy. Granted, top one of two comments. So this is what I'm saying, guys. If every single time they post, we talk about our love for Spearhead Sundays, our favorite moments, our, our little in-jokes, I think that would be really good for the show, but also really good for our official football team, the Tasmania Tigers, which should hopefully have their first game by 2067. Why don't you make your first comment so we can all like engage with it? Yeah, okay. So uh, the first comment is going to be on... Um, here we go. We've got a video here. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a Instagram reel of, of Peter Gutwin. I mean, today is, uh, is Wednesday, so you might have to scroll back a little bit. We're pre-recording because I am uh, traveling this weekend. Um, but I'm just going to comment uh, what was a funny moment. Can't believe... How many microplastics are in my balls? That might get me blocked. Yeah, maybe don't say. Maybe balls. don't say ball. Can't believe. Um, this really gets my microplastics flowing. <laughs> this really gets my microplastics flowing. Love Tasmania and love our team. <laughs> So I think that's how we're going to get away with this is every comment that that we write on their Instagram has to be about the podcast but must end with something about Tasmania and our team. So that's the rules is we're going to commandeer this Instagram account and make it the official Spearhead Sunday's Instagram. But we also must, to avoid getting blocked, just say something like love Tazzy. I'm a Tassie Tiger through and through. AFL is my favorite sport. I'm a founding member. Just anything about Tasmania, AFL, or our team goes at the end of your comment. But the first part of the comment is about the podcast, and that's going to get a lot of people talking. And because ideally, right, ideally, if every single person who joins the Tasmanian Tigers AFL team just goes, oh, well, Everyone here is already listening to this podcast. I feel like I'm missing out. Pretty soon, every win of the Tasmania Tigers is a win for Spearhead Sundays. And not only has the Tassie Tigers become the official AFL team of Spearhead Sundays, Spearhead Sundays will become the official podcast of the Tassie Tigers. I can't wait to interview the head coach of the Tasmanian Tigers in 2092 when they have their first game, when they start training for their first game. <laughs> I think that's, that's and, and people say that you need a clear social media strategy and this is what I'm talking about. This is a clear social media strategy. This is how we blow up the podcast. This is it. This is good. What a great idea. You're welcome, everyone. Get into that Instagram, get commenting about the podcast and get finishing those comments with something about Tazzy. Beautiful. Anyway, speaking about Tasmanian culture, the Pope has apologised for <laughs> using homophobic slurs in public. Yeah. This is great. See, this doesn't what it doesn't surprise me to hear the Pope using homophobic um, slurs. It does surprise me that he's apologising for them. What did he actually say? Pope says sorry for use of homophobic slur in private meeting. This is the problem with all of these news articles. They're not saying what he says. Oh, here we go. The Sydney Morning Herald, of course, has printed it in its uncensored glory. 
The Pope has issued an apology after Italian media outlets reported he told a private meeting with bishops there was too much faggotry <laughs> among those training for the Catholic priesthood and that they should be kept out. Too much faggotry. Francis was said to have made the remark in a closed-door meeting with bishops when describing priesthood colleges as already already too full of frocciagine. Frocciagine. This is Italian? They, they speak? Frocciagine. It sounds like something you hear on The Sopranos. There's too many frocciagine in the... In the <laughs> back in the day, you didn't see any of these frocciagine walking around. Which translates as faggotry when the subject of admitting gay men to seminaries was raised by participants. Yeah, look, we'll let them marry, but don't leave them around me. Sounds like my, sounds like my dad. Look, I don't have any problem with, me, with them, but as long as they don't hit on me, like, it's, it's, you'll be all right, Dad. You're married. That's, uh, that's pretty fucking, that's hilarious. It's finally we see what they actually think. The, the Pope is like, yeah, we knew that. I would say that I would be concerned about a different type of sexual practice rampant among, among the Catholic Church, don't you? Why is there no slur for pedophile? I guess it, pedophile is enough, isn't it? You know? You. Like, <laughs> pedo, you just shorten it. Um, that's very funny. Here's his apology. The Pope never intended to offend or express himself in homophobic terms, and he extends his apologies to those who felt offended by the use of a term reported by others. <laughs> it's like them going, uh, the Pope never intended for you guys to hear this. All right, someone snitching is the apology. As he stated on several occasions, in the church there is room for everyone, for everyone. Nobody is useless, nobody is superfluous. There is room for everyone, just as we are, all of us. The 87-year-old pontiff was said to, use, said, said to have used an offensive term during a meeting with more than 250 bishops last week while expressing his opposition to homosexual men joining training colleges for priests, even if they committed to celibacy. I mean, that's your, that's your problem, okay? That's your biggest problem, is who the fuck else is going to become a Catholic priest these days, all right? You want a guy to dress up in a pretty robe and sing hymns all day and be surrounded by blokes, no women allowed, all right? Who do you think is signing up for that? Who do you think has ever signed up for that, all right? It's you're, you're either going to get gay dudes who are suppressing it but still want to engage in a little bit of uh, fun dress-ups and games in theatre or incels. That's it. Plus a significant amount of pedophiles. <laughs> that I mean that's that's all you that's all you're gonna get, really. And then maybe like like one truly good, truly holy man who's like, I love God so much that I'm gonna abstain from any sexual activity. That's, but you know, he's really ugly. <laughs> I just feel, I just feel like the, there's too many rules to become a Catholic priest. So you're only going to get weirdos. You know, I, I, I heard a, a, a really interesting argument the other day of like, the reason why we have so many problems with like violent incels, right? Is, is dudes who can't attract a woman and then they take that out on the world. So like all these school shooters that you get and these like really um, violently detached members of society. The reason why we end up with these people is because there's nowhere for these people to be placed like they used to be placed, right? When you lived in a little village and you had some fucking weirdo freak who no woman wanted to be near, you, you'd put your arm around him and be like, join our brotherhood where not getting pussy is actually a virtue. <laughs> it's so, so instead of having him go, oh, I can't get any pussy. Women are whores. I fucking hate them. I'm entitled to this. I'm going to shoot up a school. You have him going, all of my desire for women is an impure thought anyway. And with enough love for God and peace and harmony, 
I'll be able to ascend to heaven and take my flock with me. Oh, and I get a cool robe and I don't have to work because everyone else looks after me by give, by tithing and I'll be okay. I actually don't need to take uh, an AK-47 to a suburban street. <laughs> I'll be all right. There's places for them to go. Now there's not. Now they just have to go to 4chan and other other message boards and get egged on until they do it and then and then get turned into a meme by that same message board. And look at this guy, fucking loser. He actually did it. <laughs> they post their fucking manifesto and everyone just makes memes out of it. You know, I've seen that. Like <laughs> one of one of the I don't even know his name, but one one of like the the shooters, right? Had his face he was so ugly that his face got turned into like one of those Wojaks that people draw, the black and white road Wojak. And I had been seeing that meme for over a year of, of like the ugly incel dude. And I only recently learned that it was actually a tracing of a guy's face who <laughs> was like some some incel shooter freak that posted his manifesto and just instantly got turned into a meme. Look at this fucking loser. So funny. Anyway, he should have become a priest is what I'm trying to say. We should have we should have taken that guy and have him in, be in charge of women and children. That would have been a much better place. We, is we should have taken... You know that guy that shot up a school? We should have actually put him in a position of power and trust in the community. <laughs> that would have been much better. What am I fucking saying? Oh, you know that guy? Yeah, that guy never would have shot up a school if we put him in charge of a church. <laughs> That would have been fine. Dumbest idea I've ever had on Spearhead Sundays. <laughs> um, all right. What else do we have? Is there anything else? No, I think we wrap up. Okay. All right. That's the, end of, that's the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening to the show. Oh, there is one thing that I wanted to address from last episode. Okay. There was a comment in the, uh, in the old comment section of, uh, of Spearhead Sundays, which is the YouTube comment section. And we can still use that, but the main comment section is being moved over to the Tasmanian Tigers AFL Instagram page. Tasmanian so, Devils. So whatever they're called, all right? They're the official team of the podcast, the Tassie Devils. My favorite team. I love AFL. I love Tasmania. Um, but I got a comment on the old comment section of last week's episode that really annoyed me. Okay, let's open it up here. Episode 338. All right, what have we got here? I'm having a look, okay? Let's listen to Lewis talk about his dog for 20 minutes. What the fuck did you think you were listening to? When has this show been anything other than here's what annoyed me last week? <laughs> For 20 minutes. It happened to be my dog. <laughs> I'm sorry. This you are you understand that you're essentially listening to a diary of what I did. And if I didn't do anything, I'll talk about how we should make incels priests. <laughs> is that what you want? What do you think the show is? Like whenever I read a comment like that of oh, Lewis just yelled about something for 20 minutes. What fucking show have you been listening to for the last fucking 10 years? That's always been what the show is. And I've always gotten those comments. Oh, this guy just talked for 20 minutes about a thing that didn't fucking matter. Hello? You listen to Spearhead Sundays, you idiot. Anyway, support me on Patreon because we're going to be uh, talking about some very, very... that You know what I wanted to say to those people? Yeah, that, the, the real good podcast is on Patreon. <laughs> that's, where we do, that's, where we, that's where we do our research. <laughs> is that what you want? A peer-reviewed fucking podcast that's you know the patreon version of speed sundays is actually like huberman lab where we actually have a team of scientists dedicated to the the premium health protocols on how to live to 150 and and cheat on five girls at the same time that's what that's where the real podcast is speed sundays on youtube that's where i just put out the shit stuff like yelling about my dog for 20 minutes <laughs> fuck you that's what you get but the patreon oh that's where the that's where the highly researched, peer-reviewed science is done. You fucking idiot. 
Anyway, guys, thank you very much for listening. Thank you for the support. Um, we're going to continue on on Patreon, where we've actually uh, we've actually next episode on Patreon that's out right now is a three hundred million dollar budget feature length film <laughs> about uh, the dangers of uh, drinking and eating McDonald's for thirty days, and it's it's got all your favorite scientists in it, and it actually is the reason why the super size guy died. That's how the documentary ends. So that's up on Patreon right now if you want to support the show. Um, we're actually almost up to 600 patrons. That's so exciting. That's really, really, really cool. 600 people supporting the show. If we get up to 600, Lewis and I have talked about adopting a pot belly pig or sponsoring a pot belly pig. That's, that's technically true, okay? That's not – That's see, the diff, the what I really want you to pay attention to is when Keelan said talked about <laughs> – because, because that that conversation ended with me, me going, yeah, but probably not. <laughs> he was like, we should adopt a pig. I was like, I don't think, I don't think we should. I don't want a pig in my house. No, no, no. You just sponsor a pig to do what? Run a marathon? <laughs> How much does it cost to sponsor a pig? I think like a hundred bucks. Yeah, all right. If we get to it's the six hundred patrons, we'll sponsor a pig. Do we get to eat it when it's fully grown? No, but we get a picture of it. Just one picture? <laughs> Two. Do we get any updates? Is it like, how funny is that where in a world where I can sponsor a child living in Sudan and take him out of a battery mine, I instead I'm like, no, I want to save a pig. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you get updates. I'm sure we can ask. It reminds me of like, um, that'd be a great scam, wouldn't it? You run, a, you run a fucking bacon farm and you sponsor all your pigs out. You just have one pig that lives in the house. You take <laughs> photos of him. Just run them through Photoshop to change the color. Oh, all right. We're setting out 600 photos of brown pigs today. And then tomorrow we're going to do 600 photos of the black pig. Uh, and uh, every other one of your 600 pigs has just been sent off to the slaughterhouse. Oh, no. All right. 600 patrons will sponsor something funny. A pig is pretty good. But, it, but whatever we do, I want updates about the official thing of the show. That actually would be great blackmail material as well. Like if we sponsored an actual child and be like, if you want Matobo to, to, to get it, make it to high school, you better not fucking, you better sponsor the show because if we drop down below 600 patrons, he's going back to the orphanage. <laughs> All right. We're going to continue on Patreon. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for uh, liking and subscribing and make sure to uh, leave your thoughts and comments uh, in the, uh, the, the Tazzy Devils Instagram page, um, the official comment section of Spearhead Sundays. I'll see you there. Have a shit one. Bye.